100 days on a deserted, deserted island. Get it? After heading to space, being a nuclear engineer, and fighting armies of orcs, I decide it's time to take a little holiday. The crew and I have been working hard all year long, and I think it's time I show you all just how much I love you. And I do love you all so, so much. Thank you. And to show you just how much I care, I wanted to make this special video. And while we're out here on our tropical paradise, I'll be using the Create mod to make tons of sweet treats using huge mega machines. And speaking of sweet, seriously, I can't say it enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching the videos of a small YouTuber like me and giving me all this love that you guys always do. You've really made this year the best year of my life. You don't understand just how amazing you all are and what you've given to me this year. I just hope that I've given like a small bit of the happiness back to you. You're the best crew a captain could ask for, and I love you. Now, let's go from sappy to sweet as we head to our deserted island. But before we get sweet, we're getting pretty salty. My ship has crashed, but luckily, just on the horizon, there's a deserted island. <gasps> the name of the video. I can't see any trees, hence the deserted part of the deserted island. But luckily, I can use the wood from my ship. I swim down into this chest, and I find a phone, which is exactly what I need to play Raid Shadow Legends. That's right, crew. Your boy is finally a raid sponsorship level YouTuber. Only took 100k subs, but trust me, it's worth it. Because now the entire crew can come join me on raid. So what are the top three reasons to join raid right now? Raid is and has always been a totally free to play game, which is good because I think I only found like three emeralds down here. It has 80 million downloads so far, including me. My gamer tag is the Captain CV. Come in and tell me how much better you are than me. It won't be that hard. And also, Raid has put together a little Christmas gift for all you new players this holiday season. Get ready to celebrate 12 days of Raid. Download Raid from the link below, and put your player ID in at 12daysofraid.polarium.com and you'll be able to set out on a 12 day festive adventure. And if you're already playing Raid, well you can use this link and get a fun little gift too. Join the event today and get a chance to win prizes from December 19th all the way to January 10th. But also, Ronda Rousey has partnered with Raid and has made her own in-game champion. Yeah, MMA's Ronda Rousey. Now, she doesn't reply to my DMs, but she does have an amazing champion that you can unlock right now just by playing Raid for the next seven days between now and February 20th. So make sure to click my link right now down in the description so that you can play her and tell her to check her phone. I managed to get you guys a really special offer. By using that link down in the description, you can get... $30 worth of unique bonuses, including a free epic champion, Tyrol, 20k silver, energy refills, an XP boost, and an ancient shard, the best shard. Hurry, so you can get these rewards in the first 30 days as a new player. So you guys should all go down into the description and click my link, start playing raid, and meanwhile, I'll try not to drown. But sadly, I don't drown, so looks like I'm gonna have to keep on playing Minecraft. But being serious here for a second, check out these shaders. Kappa. No kappa, Chad. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Too early for the bad jokes. I take it back. The sky and the sunset look ridiculously good. And these are the best shaders for water, which is why we're going to be trying them out. I'm also going to try out not dying to a creeper. So, of course, the first thing I see when I get to land is this cute textured creeper. But no time to simp over creepers right now. I've got more exciting things to do, like spend all of day one mining. Okay, this video might start out a little bit slow here, but hey, at least this 100 days video is real Minecraft gameplay. Um, <clears throat> cough, cough. Our first day on the island, I can see that there really isn't too much here to work with. No trees, and that's gonna be the real problem. Looks like we're really gonna need to get creative with the creative creating stuff. On the bright side, we do have some shipwreck loot and uh, wild onions. Yeah, that's right. That means that the first food on our deserted island video is gonna be raw onions. Boo. Well, yummy food or not, farmer's gonna farm. So we throw down some flax seeds from the boat and some onion seeds from the onions. Then I take the flowers from the onions and I decide to go plant them. So why am I doing this? To be pretty? Is it because I'm just wasting time because the salt has completely poisoned my brain? Well, I think we all know the answer to that one. We then start to make a mine right on the main island so it's a little bit more convenient. We get some copper ore, which are really important in Create Mod, and we make some furnaces to cook said copper. But next, big problem, no coal and no wood. So how do I fuel the furnaces? My strategy was to spend the whole year being a very naughty boy so that Santa would bring me some coal, but eh, that didn't pay off. So our strategy is gonna revolve around making kelp blocks. We make our first block, 
and I start to set up the kelp making cycle. And also, another little side perk is that we can make some food if we get desperate. And uh, let's let's face it, we're pretty desperate. With no coal or wood, we can't torch the whole place up for mobs, and we can't go to sleep. So the nights are gonna be really tough. We need to try to rush up the kelp and make sure we're cooking up the iron so that we can make a little bit better protection. We won't have to use kelp forever though. It's really slimy and it tastes like fish farts. So the next thing on my priority list is to make a market where we can buy tree saplings. But really quickly, I see that I'm not gonna have any time to worry about that right now. The zombies and the drown are surrounding us. Plus, look at that thing. It kinda looks like an undead swordfish and uh, I don't play this smart, they're gonna make me undead or just dead. I mean, look at that damage. And they hit so fast too. These guys are the real big threat of the entire 100 days. I'm not strong enough to kill them. And with no food, I'm struggling forced to eat rotten flesh. For right now, I decide that the only safe place is to hide underground. I mean, <clears throat> I need iron ore is why I'm doing this. I'm not running away, shut up. Oh, also I do need some andesites. See, this is calculated, totally. We get back to the surface and uh, I'm not crying. It's just raining, I swear, but again, Look at these shaders with the lights going through all the clouds. Kappa too good. Definitely better than these onions, but maybe not better than the flax because these we can use to turn into string, which is perfect. Speaking of perfect, I see some sugarcane, which I'm sure won't come in use on a candy making playthrough. No, not at all. And speaking of useless stuff, hello wandering trader. Oh, actually looking at his inventory, he is pretty useless. Now we did get some zinc, which we smelt up because we're gonna be able to use that to combine with the andesite blocks to make andesite alloy. With this, we can make a ton of stuff in the create mod, including a shaft. Mine's out of the gutter. We could also make a cog if we had the wood. And I don't know if you can tell by that subtle if, but we don't have the wood. That night with the rain and no moon, I can barely see anything, it's so dark. Including this little adorable ooh woo creeper. I've subbed to their Twitch channel, but just like everyone I simp for, they end up breaking my heart and my chest. And um, yeah, this playthrough is getting a little bit tough at this point. One heart, a broken chest, was spilled loot everywhere, and the creeper didn't even text me back after last night. Then I see a zombie villager, and I'm even more heartbroken. I really, really want to catch him and try to convert him, but I'm just too weak right now. I have to kill him and play the same. At the start of day four, I look around and things are looking pretty bad. If I can't get something going, I'm not going to make it through another night like that. I quickly head out, starving with half health, to get some wood from the ship again. I also managed to grab a chest from down here, and I love it so much, I decide to craft up two more. I then do a little bit of farm work, and I get some flax. With this string from the flax, I can make some wool, and I can use that wool to get our marketplace. But annoyingly, the market needs red wool specifically, so I'm gonna have to go find some sort of red dye on this deserted island. I do see that I could use fire coal, so I make my way out to sea, and I see this poor little flying fish, so I save him. Good karma ending unlocked. Uh, sadly, that good karma doesn't manifest itself right away because I spend the entire day looking for the fire coal without a boat, and I just can't find anything. I do come across this other sunken ship, but it's being guarded by more undead swordfish. The water gets warm, uh, but it's not because I peed myself. It's a, a warm Gulf Stream current. Yes, at this time of day, at this time of year, at this part of the country, localized entirely in my pants. Yes. But speaking of pants, we do get some copper gear. And I start to work on my very first crate machine, finally. We strip down a log and smash it with some andesite alloy, which will get us an andesite casing. And that lets us make a millstone. Also, with the wood we found earlier, we can finally make a large cog wheel and slap some slabs on it, which will make a water wheel, our first source of power for all of our little create toys. We head out and grab some calcite. This is actually kind of important for later. And some wood, obviously important for later. We then dig up some sand from the island because it's an island. That's like the only thing there's actually a ton of. And then we cook it up into glass. Then I find this nice little area right here looking perfect. We then set up a glass case of emotion. Oh, nope, nope, wrong movie. We then set up a glass box to hold our water wheel. We set up the sides with the back with the front open so that the water can run out. Then I jump up and I dump in the water. Look at that, water wheel go brr. And now we have our first create goodie. I still am gonna need more cogs if I wanna get the mill working. So we need to take a break and head back to the ship to get some more wood. I know, I know, way to ruin the moment. And then when I finally do get enough wood, it's already nighttime. And so I'm forced to focus on trying to kill these creepy boys. I run down into the mines and I wait the night out just mining. Finally, we do actually get some coal. 
and I can start to make some torches, which is kind of a big deal. I quickly start fighting the zombies and covering the island with torches to try to make the nights not so suck hardy ish I then set out a lone flower, poetic, and the sun's rising too? You know, sometimes with all this fighting and really bad dad jokes, I forget just how pretty this place is. Just then, it starts to rain. <laughs> yeah. Like, the second I start saying how nice it looks, it all gets ruined. Okay, of course. But I finally do have enough mats to make a gearbox, and we slap that on the water wheel, so you can't totally ruin my day. We then get a horizontal cog out of the bottom, and with this, we can add the mill. Ta-da! A working create machine. Are you impressed? What? No? Well, fine. I'm, I'm going to do more stuff. You'll see. We throw the calcite into the mill, and we can grind it into bone meal. And we can make some string for wool, so that we can finally get some sleep. Nah, just kidding. Sleep is for the week. I'm staying up and clearing out some more farmland. I start placing some carrots that I got from a zombie. And yes, we now have carrots and onions on our candy island. And we do end up going to bed. This means we're now getting a healthy amount of sleep and eating our vegetables. Boo, unsubscribe. For anybody who stuck around and is still watching this video, on day seven, I used the milled up bone meal on the grass so that we can get flowers. And we get a red flower. Ah, see? I add some wheat to the new farmland area because bread is pretty much the closest thing we're gonna get to candy at this point. And finally, turn the flour into red dye. Red dye become red wool. Red wool become market. Captain become a happy boy. And with that, we get our newest destitute prisoner. Welcome to your nightmare, friend. I start to look through the seed selection and I grab some of my emeralds. Priority numero uno is getting a tree. Since we're gonna need cocoa beans, I get a jungle tree. And boom, farm wood. Then, to be a little bit spicy, I get some biome of plenty trees and I buy a pink cherry blossom and a white cherry blossom. And I do this because I guess they kind of look like cotton candy. I don't know, I just think they look good. But just like everything I love, I quickly destroy it by chopping down their natural beauty. I then collect and replant the saplings, which, side note, how weird is it that trees in Minecraft drop saplings? Like, shouldn't there be pine cones or acorns for an oak tree? But I guess I've been asking too many questions, because Mojang has sent this fishy boy to Jeffrey Epstein me. Luckily, I escape into the mines again. Day 8, and I pop my head out, and... Wow, I gotta say, this island is already looking pretty transformed. It looks great. With no good ore, I need to make a zinc pickaxe, which is pretty weird. I definitely would not suggest you do this. With it, we can head back to the mines until we find some iron. And Mojang must have felt pretty bad for trying to make me commit unalive, because now they sent me some diamonds. I then dig my way back up to the surface, and when I get above the water, I gotta say, this is looking pretty nice every time. Just like the captain's TV, <laughs> yeah. After crafting up a diamond pickaxe, I decide it's a bit too pretty, and I start to cut down the whole forest like the orc I am. I then get hunted down by this drown, and honestly I probably kind of deserve this for all my deforestation, and I head back to the mines with my new diamond pickaxe. All the ravines in the ocean are flooded with seawater, which does make sense if you think about it. It just sucks because I need to make myself breathing holes everywhere I go. Which, if you think about it, that doesn't make any sense either. But I've learned my lesson, and I'm not asking any questions. We find some scoria, which is a create block that kind of does look like chocolate. Maybe if I take this and I can polish it up, I can just pretend like I make chocolate, and the viewers will never know. Oh wait, did I, did I just say that out loud? Well, it doesn't really matter now. Because that night, for being such a good boy, someone left me a little present. I kind of want to open this, but I'm afraid it might be another ad for raids, so uh, is it worth it? Eh, YOLO, let's do it. Ah, hey, cocoa beans, perfect. I actually have the means to start making a chocolate factory. And this mysterious present giver obviously agrees. Best to not question our present overlords and just start growing our beans. Starting on day 11, from now on, we have one main goal. We are gonna be making chocolate. And hopefully, we'll also be making some better puns. Hopefully. Step one to making either of those is getting a working mechanical press. So, if you guys like well-organized, clean layouts, please look away now, because I just straight up build right over the mill and just plop on the press. We accidentally bonk the dirt, and just like a man on a toilet, I'm proud of our brown creation, but ultimately, I do throw it into the seat. And after thoroughly wiping down the press, we then use it to press iron into sheets, which is the real use of the press. With these sheets, we can make a saw, which I really want to use to help us get more planks since we only have a super limited amount of trees. So before we get a huge factory going, we're going to start out a little bit smaller and work out how to make a better sawmill. 
I made a sawmill in my last video, but it was, um, well, it was straight up dog water. Let's just be, let's be honest here. So now I'm gonna work on improving the sawmill. But other than these first few machines that I've just made, I'm not gonna be doing any create mod repeats. I only wanna focus on making some new stuff for this video. Now we have a ton of kelp. It is an island after all. So we're gonna try to use a lot of belts to connect all the machines instead of using a bunch of cogs, all of which take wood. And while I am tinkering away here, still trying to figure out how to make all of these new things work, I am making this setup from scratch, but I still manage to figure things out pretty quickly. By day 12, we have a working sawmill setup, and it can take logs out of this chest, strip them, but just like last time, this system needs us to run through those stripped logs again a second time to get planks. So, you know, still dog water trash. So, we're gonna try to add a second sawmill, but not enough power. So I guess that means we're just gonna have to give up. Ha, psych, time to add another water wheel. And with that, mazel tov. We break open this glass so that we can add another water wheel to our setup. Right away, the whole system starts up again and we have solved this little power problem. But instead of just settling with a little bit more power, like my girlfriend settled for me, I decide I should crank it up into overdrive. Get it, crank, crank it up, because it's like a torque based power, uh, Never mind. We'll, we'll give the bad puns another break. By that evening, we have a glass housing set up around a total of six water wheels. And we should have tons of power, not only for the sawmill, the press, and the mill, but hopefully for, well, no spoilers. Well, I'll give you a hint. It takes cocoa beans and rhymes with schmocklet schmactory. Yeah, try to solve that in-depth ARG. While you rack your brain trying to crack my 200 IQ riddle, I'm going to start making our farm much more reliable. We're still struggling to survive with all these crazy fish mobs and a really small amount of food. So we set up a wind meal way up here, which we'll get working on soon, but for now we are gonna have to harvest by hand, like the peasants we are. With the help of the millstone, making a little extra string per the flax, we have enough wool to make a ton of sails for our wind meal. Yes, I'm gonna be saying like that, fight about it in the comments with me. We just need a bit of andesite alloy and a lack of fear of heights because now we're going to be doing a whole lot of work way up in the air here as we try to add a bunch of windmill, ew, that just sounds weird, sails to the center bearing. I add a small platform around the base of the windmill, wind, windmill, and start adding the surrounding sails. Now I really like our sawmill, but compared to this towering windmill, it's not quite as impressive. So now we just have to spend a little time waiting for more flax to grow for the sails. So in the meantime, we're gonna try to get some use out of the new double sawmill. Just place the logs in the top chest and we get them stripped on the first saw and then turned into planks on the second saw. And finally, we have the chest to collect everything when it's finished. Perfect. Plus the whole thing looks pretty sick too. Now back to the windmill. Sorry, I just couldn't say mill. I get the finished product set up and I even have some rounded tops. And by that night, I have some lights set up here too, so that we won't have a bunch of raining mobs coming off this thing. And MLG Pro Play TSM Recruit Me 100 Thieves newest member. Now we show off our huge shaft, then we start to mill up some flowers. Why? Well, it normally can give you green dye, unless you're the captain, of course, then you get nothing. I guess I'm just gonna have to take my rage out on this calcite, cause I'm done with this. Day 16, and we start to mill up that calcite, because I can't mess that up, right? We use the bone meal to get more flowers, and use more flowers to get more green dye. I, I hope. God, I hope. Hey, green dye, what do you know? We can then mix this with white dye, and we make lime dye. We put some wheat in the mill to make flour. Combine the flour with a little bit of water, and we get dough. Finally, we can combine the dough with the lime dye, and we can make ourselves some slime balls. A pretty useful part of Create. We can use that to make some super glue. And hooray! Is it all worth it in the end? Eh, kinda. Use the glue on this side of the chassis and then connect it to a long arm of logs that will go down the length of the farm. If you saw my last video where I was doing a bunch of this, you're probably a little bit bored, but trust me, the new machines are coming. For now, let the farmer boy farm. We then start to make some harvesters out of iron sheets, but with only four, we're gonna need to make some more. So we are gonna need to get even more iron. Now, to be honest, I actually wanna try out a brand new machine to try to fix this little problem, but we need some iron right now. So I'm gonna do it the old school way and spend the entire night mining. Day 17, and it's back to the good church of Bonk once again. 
But now I'm gonna try out some new cool stuff. This is a create machine that I've never made, but it seems like it could be really useful by making an encased fan and aiming it down the length of this belt with some water in front of it, it should be able to wash everything that we put in that top chest. So now it looks like everything should be set up in theory. I run some red sand down the belt and there we go. It's washed into a gold nugget. I run this setup the entire night until we get enough gold to go a bonky bonk. And with these gold sheets, we can make a wrench. The wrench is super useful in the create mod. We're already gonna get some use out of it by turning this funnel so that everything that goes down this belt will go into the basin. And while making gold out of thin air is great, don't get me wrong, the real reason we made this machine is so that we can run gravel through it. By doing this, we can get iron nuggets, which in theory means as long as we have some gravel, we can make our own iron. Two problems. Problem one is that the gravel is immediately going into the chest before it gets washed, and two, this jerk has come to ruin my day. I just wanna make some iron in peace. Please, fish daddy, no. So for now, we need to stop the gravel from going into the chest. Unfortunately, this means we're gonna to have to pick up all the nuggets by hand. And just like my waistline after the holidays, this is not ideal, but we are technically making iron and we can definitely improve this later. We get as much gravel as we can set up in this machine, and then we head out to sea to try to find a broken portal. I do manage to find this little drowned temple thingy he down here, but I'm gonna have to keep moving on. Then I can kinda see these little lights down below us. I gotta say, the only downside of Kappa shaders is that the water is realistically really hard to look through. But sure enough, it is a broken portal. While it is nice that I can sit down on a magma block and breathe, we now have to slowly, slowly break away this obsidian. Yeah, did I mention slowly? It takes all night and then some, and finally, we do find our way back home. And that took way too long. Honestly, I probably should've just gone mining and tried to find some lava. It's too late now. We head to the flower island, and we set up our nether portal. And yes, I put dirt in the corners, cause I'm a peasant like that. Look, it took me 420 hours of mining to get all this obsidian, so give me a break. But before we run in there, we harvest our iron nuggets and run those into our bonk machine. Now we can make a few empty blaze burners and head into the nether. And this is an important part of create too. Eventually, if you want to advance in the create mod, you're gonna to have to head to the nether so you can catch a blaze in an empty blaze burner in order to make brass. And we run around for a full day looking for a fortress to do just that, but I never do manage to find it. Just like I never do manage to find happiness. But just like I found YouTube to fill that dark void, I do find this blaze lantern. This will spawn blazes, and if I carefully, carefully build my way over to this, and I'm not gonna lie, this, this is a really, really bad idea, I might be able to catch a blaze. And luckily, this is actually easier than fighting them. I don't need to swipe them and wear their health down, I just need to one-tap them with the burner to grab them. Just need to, just need to. Sir, please, you're being a little difficult, <clears throat> sir. Finally, we do grab two blazes and we run before more show up. Back on the slightly less dangerous island, we set up a gearbox. We can craft up a whisk, which we're gonna need to make a mechanical mixer. We set up a horizontal gear, then on that, we set up the mixer, under that, we put the basin, and finally, down on the ground, we put the filled blaze burner. And now, we can throw our copper and zinc into the basin and pump up the burner with some wood and when a copper ore and a zinc ore love each other very, very much, they both go into a mechanical mixer, and nine months later, you get yourself a baby brass bar. Aww. So with all of this brass, we start to make our brass tool set, which is honestly almost as good as diamond. And so is the armor too, but unfortunately we're gonna need a little more zinc. No big deal, I've got bigger things to work on right now anyway like murdering these fishy boys and finding out that even with my brass gear, I'm still not good enough to fight them. Looks like my stepdad was right all along. And speaking of being not good enough, we get some more harvesters and you guessed it, we still don't have enough to finish the entire auto farm. But after a little bit more work with our iron farm, we get the harvesters all set up. See dad, I am good enough. Now we set up some chests on the back of the arm and finally we go to bed. Sorry, I, I know that ended a little anticlimactic there, but hey, here's something more exciting. It's day 20, and that means we get a present. Oh, or, well, maybe not. 
So we didn't make the chocolate like we were asked, or honestly even start making chocolate. Really isn't that hard to understand how our secret Santa might be right to be a little bit upset with us. So step one is making sure we have a ton of cocoa beans. I harvest up the ones that have grown, but honestly, we're gonna need more trees to grow even more beans. We cut down this tree to get more jungle saplings, and of course, because I'm the captain, we get zero saplings. Boo, unsubscribe. So we take some more emeralds that we looted from the ships, and this time we aren't messing around. I buy four saplings and I set them up together so that we can get a mega tree. Now to make more chocolate, we need more beans, sure, but we're also gonna need some sugar, easy. And also, ooh, some milk, not so easy. Now this could be a problem, but I think I might have an answer. So first, we're gonna use some of that jungle wood that we harvested and set up these two towers to start growing some more cocoa beans on them. Bone meal the jungle trees and pop goes the mega tree. And now we can start growing even more beans. I add a few more chests and then on day 21, we get some storage interfaces so that we can add them to the auto farm. One of them facing out away from the farm, and then one of them a block away facing in. We add a chute to move everything down into this chest that we add underground. Now, finally, we can start up the central windmill. And I fall and I break my ankles. I guess that's what I get for calling it a windmill. Lastly, we just have to set up a mechanical bearing on the top of the radial chassis. Face it down, and finally, stick our shaft up the backside. Ta-da, here we go. Our massive auto farm is sucking up some wheat and oh, apparently running through the hillside, uh, which is not great. But then it goes and grabs up some flax and some onions and eventually stops to dump them all into the chest. Food achieved. But onions and carrots just aren't good enough for a little fatty like me. We're gonna start to flatten out the hillside since this area is already covered by the auto farm. Till up the ground, you know how this goes. And now we just need to figure out a new crop to plant here. And I think I've got the perfect one. But first we combine some sand and some paper to make sand paper. Yeah, I know, so complicated. Try to keep up. We can use this to polish our rose quartz and we can use the rose quartz to make an electron tube. This tube, along with a little bit of brass can be turned into a brass funnel. Now the difference between our old andesite funnel and this new brass one is that you can add a filter to the brass funnel. Our filter is gonna allow iron nuggets and chicken nuggets, oh man, I wish, and flint. This means that the gravel cannot go into the funnel until it turns into either flint or nuggets. Now this way, we won't have to sit here and harvest the iron by hand. It'll automatically go through the system and we will be getting iron nuggets much much faster and really a lot easier. But wait, there's more. Call now and I'll throw in a mill in front of the belt, which will grind cobblestone into gravel. This means that all we have to do is put cobble into this top chest. It'll be milled down into gravel and then the gravel will move down this belt just like this. As it does, it gets washed into iron nuggets. And that means we can turn cobblestone into iron automatically. Yeah, I know, you're all super impressed. I will start taking girlfriend applications now. <clears throat> I'll just keep on uh, refreshing that inbox. And uh, until then, the next day, we get back to working on that new crop. And once again, Pam's Harvest Craft, you guys know, the best Minecraft mod, can help us get some milk without those pesky cows. Soybeans will be our next crop in the auto farm. So now we just have to see if Pam's Harvest Craft and Create will work together. Until then, let's start working on our last plot of land and get our new, new crop. So we head out and we start to grab some sand from under the sea, down where it's wet. <coughs> Sorry, what were we doing? Oh right, we were tearing up this entire plot of land. And by day 24, we start to lay out our sand in this checkered pattern. And I think you guys know where this is going. We're officially going from soy boys to sugar daddies as we start to set out all of our sugarcane in the auto farm. But there is one problem, a big problem. Speaking of soy boy, we can turn soybeans into soy milk, which is good, but we can't drain the soy milk into the crate drain. And that's a problem if we wanna use it in an automated chocolate factory. First, I try to add the milk bottles by hand to the mixer, no good. I craft up a drain and try to drop the milk onto that, no good. But while we're working on this, we find a zombie villager. Yes, good. We can get a boat and trap him and get a little trader villager. 
What better spot to be trapped than under the cherry blossom tree? Honestly, I'm kind of jealous of this little guy. But what I'm not jealous of is my next task. I make a diamond shield and I head out to the sunken ship that I had seen earlier. I use a couple of doors to make a portable little air bubble and I start looting my heart out. And what good loot we find. Because down here in the ship's cargo hold, I find a ton of useful stuff like iron, gold, emeralds. But more importantly, we find a crate of golden apples, which is perfect because now we're halfway to curing Victor. I, I decided to call the villager Victor now. We grab up everything we can hold, and once again, greed gets the better of me, because soon, some of those fishy boys start spawning up again. And these guys are a nightmare on land, so imagine when we're in the water with them. But we manage to get this desperate kill, and then we run back home. The first thing we do when we get back is make up some apple trees. And these apples will become part of one of our factory machines. But for right now, I just think fruit trees look really cool. But even with all this good news, we still don't have a milk answer. And just when I'm really starting to feel worried about this, well, this is what I get for simping. Not only did my chest again get popped, but my little machine setup got broken too. I cover up the crater, just like I cover up my motions. And then I try to fix the iron farm and sawmill. But honestly, all of this was kind of a nice distraction because I really don't want to think about how I'm going to find a milk solution. So I continue to distract myself and I start building a cherry bridge from the main island to the flower island. I start to make some small log supports and then I connect them using some fences. Then using a few more fences, I decorate some of the supports and turn them into lamp posts. So of course you need lanterns on your lamp post. So we do just that. And yeah, by that night, I'm gonna say this bridge is pretty top notch. It really does look good. In fact, it's so good, I think even the moms like it. You gotta pay the troll toll though, buddy. We finish up the sugarcane farm, and now the auto farm is looking pretty top notch too. Oh, well, at least it's pretty close. So now we could take a short break and start making a brewery and getting it ready to cure Victor the villager. We just need to find some sugar. Easy, and a mushroom, which is gonna be a medium, and then a spider's eye, which is gonna be pretty hard. So first, the sugar, we've got that. The mushroom is just gonna be a quick trip to the nether. We grab a quick brown shroom and run back to the over. Then, the hard part. We head out, and I try to find an area underground where I had seen some mobs before. We head down, and I start mining around, and soon, I find a spider. And, ta-da, we get our spider eye. And, we even find some diamonds. It is kind of weird that a spider eye is more exciting to me than these diamonds, but I'll take them both. We then grab some lava and head back to the surface. Back up here, at the start of day 28, we combine our sugar, brown mushroom, and a spider eye to get our fermented juicy gusher. And we throw it into the brewing stand. We throw in a little gunpowder, but don't worry, it's safe. It's organic. And finally, we get out one of our golden apples. Now, Victor, my stinky friend, it's finally time. Drink it, buddy. Cheers. And we sit here. Seriously, I've really got nothing better to do. Seriously, I've got nothing to do until I can figure out a milk source. I'm hoping that we can trade for some emeralds and maybe I could buy a cow through the Harvest Craft Market, I hope. So since I am a farmer, I want a little farmer company. So I make a composter. Ah, an onion merchant. Now I see why you were so stinky and I love it. Soon I see that Victor has layers and he's reached level two and wants to buy cabbage. Not exactly candy, but that's okay. I can work with that. So we buy up some cabbage seeds and we start to fill up the last little spot of the plot that we got. <laughs> nice. Come on, Victor, wake up. I'm starting to get tired and I'm starting to rhyme again. So I need my sleep. I sell a few of the cabbage and have enough emeralds to buy those cows, but I'll do that in the morning. And boom. We get two cow eggs, which just saying that out loud does sound kind of weird, but never mind that. What's more important is that Secret Santa has once again saved the saga some more, son. We craft up a ton of red fences and mill up some flax so we can make a cow pen with some carpets on top. So now we clear out a place in the cherry blossom forest, which sounds so romantic. And well, we ruin it a little bit by throwing down a cow pen here. So, um, oops. Oh well. So we set up a little pen with some cherry log supports with torches on them. Then in the center, we add a little lamppost to keep the mobs from milking my cows. Only I get to milk my cows. Isn't that right, you cute little milk pouches? 
Then, on day 31, we head to the shore next to the water wheels, and we start to build out a platform to start the biggest project yet. The first platform is on the right, right in front of the water wheels. And this is where we're going to make our cocoa bean farm. First, we set out a ring of jungle wood. We get it all set up in a full circle, and then we throw down the cocoa pods. And by that night, it's looking pretty good. Bam! Radial chassis in the center, then a mechanical bearing on top of that. We make an arm to the farm, the same as the big farm, and then we run a shaft from the water wheels to the mechanical bearing, which is perfectly in line, almost like I'm good at this or something. We then get a gearbox ready, but I don't have enough iron for the harvesters, so it's almost like I'm bad at this. So we're forced to once again head down into the mines for another night. Bonky bonk bonk, and now we have some harvesters. With these, we can finally make a farm, but it does turn out we're going to have to cut a little part of the circle so the whole thing isn't all attached. We then go to the very end of our platform and add our imposter chocolate blocks. It takes us all night, but finally, we get a belt system running from the cocoa farm to this mixer platform area thing. I mean, you're, you're watching the video, you, you know what I'm talking about. So at first, we do set up a chest for the overflow, and then we set up the funnel to lead onto the belt. So let's try it out. Okay, here we go. Hey, all right, there we go. I think this might actually work. But to really find out, first, we're gonna have to get the belt running. So let's throw down this cog and plop down the basin. I do end up resetting this a little bit here. Now, instead of having a chest, the beans will just go straight onto the belt. Reinstall said belt and then get the cogs in place. So by that night, we can continue to run the shaft all the way down to the belt setup. And of course, you guys already probably saw this coming. It's going in the wrong way. No big deal. We can throw it on a gearbox and reverse the shaft direction on the way out. Boom, belt all better. We fire it up, immediately get crushed in an industrial accent standard procedure. And then soon enough, we get our first cocoa beans on the belt heading down towards the mixing bowl. So with that, now on day 34, we can get started on the second ingredient farm. This farm should be a sweet setup, subs, as soon we'll be showered in sugar. This one is a little bit different though. I want the water to stay in the bottom, so we kind of make this pool sort of thing. It kind of almost looks like a fish farm thing. And I decide I want it to look a little bit nicer. So I'm gonna make some glass for the sides. I do kind of like it, but eh, by cooking up all that sand, we've run out. So now I'm gonna have to go down diving again. I swear, I'm, I'm better at planning than this looks, okay? We then set up the same checkered pattern, but the water is already in place. Now we can plop down the sugarcane and it goes right on top, easy. So suddenly we set up the sweet sugar. These alliterations are all getting absolutely annoying, eh? Then we set up the radial chassis one block up. This way, the harvesters will only cut down the sugarcane if it grows a block up and not just slice it down to the base. We get the arm super glued onto the chassis, like always, then get a mechanical bearing facing down. We get the harvesters set up like we do, and then get another gearbox on top of the cocoa farm. This way we can run a shaft all the way over to the gearbox on top of the sugarcane farm. And then at this point, we're actually gonna have two gearboxes on top of the mechanical bearing with the one on the very top set up so it's in line with the shaft at the cocoa farm. And then we, well, we attach the shaft. I feel like I should be narrating this like step by step because maybe you guys are learning something, but also like most of you probably already see what's going on. So either way, then we run the shaft from the bottom gearbox over to this end and set up the interfaces, blah, blah, blah. You guys get it. Then we set up another system of belts. So finally, on day 36, we can connect the whole thing to get it running. And well, this is not exactly what I wanted, but I'm also too lazy to add another gearbox right now. So I'm just going to switch the harvesters to the other side. And yeah, I'll admit it. I'm lazy. OK, so now we fire this thing up once again. And uh, can you guys see the problem? Any of you have ever eaten a candy bar before and you pay really close attention, you might notice that it doesn't have any huge chunks of raw sugar cane in it. I know, I know, seems like it might be yummy, but Create needs us to add a mill to refine the sugar, so I guess we're going to have to do that now. Sadly, that is easier said than done, because the mill needs to be a block lower to catch the sugar cane that falls out of the interface. And the belt system needs to be a block lower than that to catch the refined sugar that's coming out of the mill. And if any of that didn't make any sense at all, just to make things a little bit simpler, what it means is we have to build the belt system two blocks lower down in the sea. And that's not easy. In the end, it really wasn't that pretty. 
and it took us like all night to figure out how to get all the belts going in the right direction. But finally, on day 37, all right, farm is going in the right direction. Check. Raw sugar goes into the mill and starts to get refined. Check. Sugar drops onto the belt, mixes with the seawater, and gets completely ruined on its way to the basin. Check. So now, with that working, we officially have two ingredients processed and heading to the mixing bowl. Now, we just need to start mixing them. If you want to mix any ingredients, you're going to have to make them a little more juicy. What better way to get something a little more juicy than to get some good old giant mommy milkers involved? We get a drain, a pump, and some copper pipes crafted, and we connect them to the far side of the basin. The plan is to drain the cow juice into the well drain, and then pump it into the basin here. But I'm certainly not going to milk the cows by hand and touch the mommy milkers because I'm waiting until after marriage for that kind of hanky-panky. So we need to make a belt system leading into the drain to carry the buckets of milk. Next, we need a chute followed by a brass funnel set up vertically. On the very top of this, we put a deployer. Then, on day 38, we need to add the mommy part of the mommy milker. So, we set up a glass case, again to hold the cow, but also so that she can look out and see the entire world move by without her. We make up a lead, which I gotta say is much easier to do and create, and then we grab us a victim, <clears throat> I mean a patriot, and we take her to the auto milker. And now to seal you in, <clears throat> I mean make your amenities more cozy and confining. Next, at the opposite side of the milk belt, we get an encased fan facing upward. We then crank it up so the fan will start blowing. No jokes, bad cappy. Be cool. We add some chutes to make a tube, sort of, which will pull items up that are being pushed by the fan. Then we set the filter of the brass funnel so that it will only let out milk buckets down onto the belt. But as close as we are to getting this whole thing set up, we're still gonna need a little more iron. So we head back down to the mines and the flooded, icky, not very fun ravines. And the good news is we find a ton of iron, cobble for the iron farm, and more good ores. The bad news is by the time we finally get out and get back home, it's already the night of day 40. Night? It's already night 40? Uh, that just sounds wrong. Speaking of wrong, this secret Santa is getting a little savage here. First dirt, now Ponzel? I mean, just send me coal already. At the same time, turns out my punishment isn't over yet, because over here I see that the sugarcane farm somehow took a huge hit. And on day 41, we finally get the belt set up underneath the auto milker. We get a bucket on the deployer and hear that sound? That sounds like the milkiest mommy I've ever heard. And soon we get a full milk bucket falling onto the belt and emptying into the drain. We set up a funnel on the chutes so the buckets can go around, fill with milk and drain over and over and over again. We just need to get the cog in the right place, power up the pump and boom, the milk is now flowing into the basin with the sugar and the cocoa beans. So now we can turn all of the farms on and we can get all of the ingredients running into the central base. Oh, whoa, whoa, dude, don't scare me like that. Silly cow, you can't start a violent uprising against the ruling class. You're a cute little cow, not a people's army. Back to the milky gulag with you. Finally, we have a kind of weird task that we have to figure out now. See, we need to get a blaze burner under the basin and we built all of this on the water level so this is going to be under the sea no 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 don't let them know about your secret american idol dream just crush it anyway we set up a small underwater deep slate area to keep the blaze burner dry and now we start to set up the mixer on top we add a gear and gear box then run some cogs from the sugarcane side to the middle to power the mixie boy we just need to add some fuel to the fire and nope the mixer is going too slow, which is fair, because if you look at it, it does look like it's a little bit too weak to be mixing up some chocolate. Definitely no chocolate waterfall there. The good news is, you can use a large cog to speed up the rotation, and finally, finally, we have our factory making some sweet, liquid chocolate. And while this bucket of chocolate is great, we still need to make, we still need to find a way to make the chocolate into something more useful. We add a smart pipe, we program it to only move through finished chocolate, and then we have that empty into another basin. On top of this basin, we add a mechanical press. We get some cogs running from the cocoa bean side to power the press. But just like a little kid making cookies, but 
Just like a little kid making cookies with mom, this wandering trader wants to lick the spoon after everything's mixed. However, when said mixer is an industrial sized machine, I would advise against it, little guy. We do get the pump and the press powered, and the chocolate flows into the basin. Then, finally, the press, well, presses the chocolate into, drumroll please, chocolate bars. And right now, we can finally officially say they were making dessert on this deserted island. And it might have taken us half the playthrough to make this, but I gotta say, this is so cool. A huge, multi-farm mega machine that only needs a bit of fuel in the burner to make chocolate bars. Which, by the way, are an amazing food source. They're great for filling your hunger and getting our health back. But don't tell your parents I said that. Unlike everyone else on YouTube, I don't claim to be a health expert. And speaking of poor health, I'm going to add a huge holding tank to collect all of the overflowing liquid chocolate. And after less than a day, we're already getting a ton of chocolate bar stacks coming. In fact, we have enough chocolate here to keep us eating only chocolate bars for a while. Which is good, because we need to reset this whole pipe system so that we can hold the extra chocolate until it can be pressed and used for other things, no spoilers. I decide that we're going to have a huge, towering tank that really will pump up our chocolate production since we're making some so fast. Unfortunately, I don't really know what I'm doing here, so I do have to waste three tanks full of chocolate because, well, I don't really know how tanks work. And I add pipes that take the chocolate directly up to the main tank. But we're not done yet. Remember how I said the only thing that this entire factory needs is for you to add fuel? Well, I'm too lazy to even do that. So I craft up another deployer. But this time, we won't be poking any cow udders. Nope, this is going to be aimed at the burner so we can milk him instead. Hmm? Uh, what's that? Oh. I see. Okay, so we're not actually going to milk him. Instead, we're actually going to make a chest and a small belt system here with some funnels so that we can take planks from the chest and put them in the burner automatically over time. This way, I can fill the chest with a ton of stacks of planks and walk away. And the chocolate factory will be non-stop mass-producing chocolate without any need for me to worry about it at all. So with that in mind, we then spend an entire day cutting down a silly amount of trees and running them all through the sawmill. This way, we'll have so many planks that the chocolate factory will be making chocolate throughout the entire 100 days by itself. Seriously, I mean, we spend an entire day, a silly amount of time doing this. I keep planting and bone mealing and cutting down all the trees for almost two whole days. Finally, on day 48, I bonk up some copper so that we can make so many tanks that this chocolate tower is less of an industrial sized holding pen and more of a world wonder at this point. Just by day 48, we have a chocolate factory that would make anyone jealous. Now, all we need to do is add a pump so that we can actually get some use out of this chocolate again. I add a pump to the side, and this will be here so that we can start to fill up buckets with liquid chocolate. On day 49, I even start to bulk up the cocoa farm by adding beans on the outside of the jungle wood so that beans will grow on both sides, doubling the cocoa production. We farm up some more jungle wood, and I even add a little bit of jungle wood in the small open spots of the farm so that we can use up every little bit of space in the cocoa farm. Wow. I really am becoming a corrupt corporate overlord, but deep down inside, I still have some good boyness in my heart because now that I'm making chocolate bars, before we get to day 50, I sat on a present under the tree with a yummy little chocolate bar inside. I still don't know who's giving us gifts all the time and who this is for. It also doesn't look like I know how to type at all. Ooh, maybe it's just the diabetes making my hand shake. Either way, on the morning of day 50, the chocolate bars did in fact find their way to our secret Santa and in its place, we have maybe the best gift yet, bees. Now this is perfect for two reasons. One, I do in fact like jazz. And two, this means we can now breed bees and we can add honey to our candy recipes. We use some bone meal to make some flowers and then hidden away in the cherry blossom forest, we can put up a beehive and poop out our bees. How you doing, Barry? Brittany, looking nice? Ah, love is in the air. And so are the baby bees. So cute, I can't believe it. Oh, come on, you knew I was gonna make some kind of bee pun. I try to keep the bee puns to a minimum, however. I'll let the comments section deal with that. I then craft up some shears, but before we can use them, we're gonna have to be patient. Okay, seriously, seriously, I'm done. I promise, maybe. 
I start to set up a pump on the chocolate tank. I didn't really plan this all the way out, and soon I have a wave of liquid chocolate pouring right into my face. Hmm, yum. I need to plug this up. And, well, honestly, rethink my life choices here for a second to not repeat that. I set up a pump on the opposite side with a basin and a mechanical press so that we can get back to making chocolate bars. I connect the press and get a cog up to it so it's powered. Now, we just need to connect the pump and power it, and nope. Ooh, that is bad. You probably weren't even thinking about our power usage at all, and I know I wasn't. After all these machines are running, we finally meet our limit. But instead of just throwing another few wheels onto the turbine, I decide to make another small platform. And on top of this, we add another six water wheels. Another case of glass, just like the first turbine. And now I decide to head to bed with visions of sugar plums dancing in my head. That's a nursery rhyme, right? You guys remember that, right? Anyway, we get the glass finished around the second turbine and soon we have water running through a shiny new turbine. Yay. Then we can easily directly run a shaft from the sugarcane farm to the second turbine. Nice and symmetrical. Wow, almost like I planned this out. And now our factory has twin turbines doubling its power and looking pretty good in the process. And more importantly than looks, we can now connect the pump and bingo bongo, we can continue to make chocolate bars and the captain is now a very, very happy boy. But just as soon as I start to think I'm really smart, I see that I've used a drain over here where I definitely should have known that that was wrong. I set up a belt system, then power it thinking this will fix the problem. And clearly this just isn't gonna work. So I throw the bucket on and <laughs> nope. Turns out we just had to look at the recipe. We would have seen the easiest solution ever, which is just to use a depot, of course. Yep, humbled once again, just like I deserve. So dumb, but it's all good because now we have our spout filling up with chocolate and then we have our bucket filling up with chocolate. With these, I start to make a chocolate moat because at this point I'm kind of just being silly, but hey, it does look pretty cool. I am really, really way too excited about this chocolate factory. I gotta say, this is so cool. Let's be real, this is the real reason I made this video in the first place. But unbeknownst to me at the time, it turns out that the second half of this video is gonna be way more than just making chocolate. These bees are gonna help me make a ton of candy that is way better. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you can make candy that's better than chocolate. I'm not gonna clickbait and say that, but the create machines that we're gonna build to make that candy are a lot better. Day 54, and we start out by eating a bar of chocolate, breakfast of champions, and I head down to start doing a full day of mining. After all, I'm waiting for the bees to recharge so I can keep breeding them. Is, re is recharge the right word for that? I mean, they do buzz, so... Anyway, we get home, then we run all of the scoria we've collected through the sawmill, which is gonna cut it into decorative blocks. So while we wait for the bees to buzz and the scoria to cut, we start on the second half of the candy machines, which all starts by adding another platform. On the morning of day 56, we have another platform and we start to add some dirt on top of it. Any ideas where I'm going with this? Thanks to an envy boy, we have a block of grass. So it would just be a boring bunch of dirt. And next we add the flowers. Now I think you know where I'm going with this. I then start to breed up my BBs. Um, that's what you call a baby bee. And then I get some honey so I can make a new beehive. We set up a little border of cherry logs around the dirt. Then we start to make a glass dome setup with the beehives on the side. I put some campfires underneath the beehives so that we can safely start harvesting the honey. And if you haven't figured out what we're doing at this point, I mean, you're clearly not one of the loyal viewers. We're obviously making a, <clears throat> hold on here. Okay, gonna get some Googling done. An apiary? Uh, well, whatever, a bee farm. And in order to finish this apiary, we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer and get some more honey. But of course, I'm impatient. And I start walking the bees over with promises of bee booty. Oh, okay, no, that one was bad. But despite the bad puns, they still come over to the new bee farm anyway. I actually do mess this part up. I place the beehives sideways here, and I didn't realize, and yes, this will come back to bite me. Or should I say, come back to sting me? No, anyway, I really shouldn't. On the start of day 57, I'm in a rush to finish the glass dome because I'm afraid the bees are gonna wake up and start to run all over the place. The good news is the bees seem to be going back and forth with the new beehives, which should be fine, annoying, but at least they won't die. The bad news is I don't have any time to get the glass and I quickly have to finish the roof with planks. And uh, ooh, wow, this looks really, really bad. I mean, ew, it's like hard to look at even. 
But okay, I'm, I'm just trying to keep the bees in the new hive area. Little did I know, most of the bees are getting stuck in the hives that are facing the wrong way, and they can't get out either way. So, so ugly. I spend that night bone mealing, growing flowers, and collecting the flowers. No, that's no innuendo. Then we get a ton of flax from the auto farm and mill it up into a ton of wool. With this, we can make almost two whole stacks of windmill sails. We're gonna be using a huge windmill to power the new machines, starting with the pump to pull honey out of the beehives. I get about half of it done today, but before I go to bed, I decide once again, I don't wanna just repeat what I've been doing with all of my other create stuff. I've always been making vertical windmills. I tear down the sails and I set the bearing so that it's facing outward toward the sea. By the next day, I can start to glue some cherry fences to the center windmill and start to run out in about five blocks each direction. It kind of looks a little bit wonky, I'll admit, but I also have a bee farm made out of glass and half wood, so I'm clearly not too worried about looks at this point. Then we start to glue the sails to the fences and start to make the windmill over again, but this time facing out horizontally. Until, finally, by that night, ah, okay dude, I swear, I make more messed up machines than working machines at this point. I have to turn this off, but soon I get everything glued in properly. That night, the whole thing moves together, and there are so many sails, it's actually moving pretty fast. Perfect. Tons of power at a usable speed. But just to make sure the output is a bit faster, I add a large cogwheel and set a bunch of smaller cogwheels in the four corners to speed it up even more. So now the windmill has four outputs, a ton of power and speed, and should help us power a whole lot more machines. But for now, we just need it to power this pump. So in the morning of day 60, we set out some gearboxes at the bottom and then two at the top, and it's looking pretty nice. But honestly, in comparison to the B form, everything looks pretty nice. And here we go, the day 60 gift, which is some sweet berries. I gotta be honest, I'm not really sure what kind of candy I can make with sweet berries, but let's just see what we can do for now. I set them up in line of the auto farmer, hoping that they're gonna farm just like they would any other crop. But I gotta be honest, I've never done this before. I have no idea what's about to happen. We then run a shaft all the way over the bee farm to a gearbox here. Cog it up and get the pump working. And mm, still no honey. And I haven't seen any bees in a while. He thinks, still not figuring it out. So at the time, I'm thinking that the correct answer is, well, just throw more bees at the problem. That should work, right? So at night, while the bees are all sleeping, I try to quickly change the beehive wood into glass so that my eyes aren't bleeding when I look at it. I just barely get the whole thing done, and I'm glad that the bees haven't woken up yet, or at least that's what I'm thinking. But at the same time, I'm pretty quickly coming to the conclusion that I'm kind of thinking they might never wake up again. Let's one last time throw more bees at the problem, like a general throwing more soldiers into a meat grinder. At this point, I'm gonna leave even more bees here, and if they don't come out by tomorrow, then I know I'm gonna have to start Googling and using lifelines to figure this out. I head out and start to place my finished scoria blocks all around the belt parts of the chocolate factory, because I guess some customers are like dying from eating chocolate that's so filled with ocean water. Now as a captain, I think that pressing sea salt directly into your chocolate is the only way to do it. But my legal team is asking me to make food that's safe for human consumption, blah, blah, blah. So finally, after spending a whole day and night making the area around the belts clean and seawater free, I finally have all the ingredients cleanly going into the mixer. Are you happy, FDA? And well, I have to admit, when I'm finished and I stand back and look at it all, it looks pretty good. So maybe the FDA was right. And that's saying something. I rarely agree with government agencies, hence the tax evasion. But speaking of being evasive, the bees are still nowhere to be found. So after checking Google, I do in fact see that I'm doing it wrong, and I finally figured out that the beehives have to be facing the right way. I see a bee pop out of this beehive, and it's confirmed. I know what I have to do. So I start to break the beehives, and the first two don't seem upset. So the bees... So I'm thinking, it must be safe to break the beehives, right? Well, I quickly find out that these little stingy boys are getting pretty spicy. Now, since I was smart enough to finish the dome and get doors up, I can close them and quickly get away before I get a booty pricking. Which is good, because, ouch. But also, I don't want any of the bees to sting me and die if I can help it. But I will admit, I have to pop my head back in here, and it does get pretty close every time I break a beehive. Last one. Whew. Okay. I think I actually got all the beehives fixed and didn't lose any of the bees. So that's actually pretty nice. Now, as I reset everything up, 
and have all the beehives facing the correct way, I gotta say, the finished product here actually does look pretty good. Also, by that night, we have even more good news. We have a full chest of chocolate bars, that they're actually starting to overflow, and the press is now starting to press the chocolate bars into chocolate blocks, which is kind of cool. On day 64, I find myself asking, do you like them apples? Because we start to make four apple tree saplings. Do you guys even get that reference that I'm making right there? Anyway, I do like them apples, so I head out and make another platform right next to the bee farm. In the center of the platform, I set down a cog, and then I add a mechanical bearing on top of it. Add a radial chassis on top of that, and I think you guys probably know where I'm going with this. We then place four dirt blocks, and we can start to grow our apple trees all around the central chassis. Hit them with a little bone meal, and now we have a bunch of apples ready to be added to our next farm. And while it looks good, the apples are actually getting in the way of me finishing the arm part of the farm. So I do have to cut them down, but in the meantime, I will run shafts to power the farm and get all the harvesters added to the arm. We then add our interfaces on the side that is closest to the bee farm, and then I decide to add a pump and a tank on this side of the bee farm to get the apples and the honey as close to each other as I can. I'm kind of like an apple and honey matchmaker in a ways. Then I head back to the chocolate farm because I have a little plant, which starts with me getting a ton of buckets of chocolate. Then on day 66, I replace all of the water in the water wheel turbines with chocolate. Why would I do this? This is a chocolate factory powered by chocolate, and it looks dope. Willy Wonka would be proud. So now that I truly have everything here finished, I take a little minute to step back, and I gotta say, this looks sick. And even more upside, the bees are now coming out of their hives and making a ton of honey. I do have to do a little bit of reworking on the apple farm so that I can get the apples moving over to the honey. And while I'm doing this, I get a little poke from the fishy boy. But, uh, well, I hope he goes. Later, dude. I thought him getting stuck on the windmill was so funny, I didn't even try to kill him, which does then immediately backfire on me. I have to say, the lag has me locked up here, and I can barely manage to get away with half a heart. Even with my decent brass gear, I get down super low and I need to just hide and run away. I gotta say, that was so close. I, I start to sweat and the sweat is, hmm, is that chocolate? Well, that doesn't seem too alarming. So let's just get back to work. We then get another pump hooked up to the honey pot. Yes, that's what I'm gonna be calling it. And that's leading to a spout. We then run some power to the pump like you do and set down a depot, which is eventually where the apples are gonna end up. We then set up a couple belts leading from the interfaces of the apple farm to the honey spout and straight into the sea, just like it should. I do have to do some slight adjusting here and working again to get the finished apples off the depot so that they can run into a chest. I then go ahead and spend some quality time with my little prisoners, I mean friends. Um, and I gotta say, we do have a pretty solid number of prisoners, I mean friends. We then fire up the apple farm and soon we get some apples running under the honey, all sticky and yummy. Ugh. I swear, these fish are the worst part about this island. But the best part is that now we can in fact officially say that we have a new type of candy. These are honeyed apples, which are actually pretty easy to set up, and they're a pretty good food, as long as you can figure out a way to get yourself some bee farms. But on day 69, we have a smooth running bee farm full of tons of bees, a completely loaded up apple farm, and a setup that is making us honey apples you might even say it's nice. Not as nice as the chocolate factory. Now we're not pumping out as many apples as we are chocolate bars, but that's just because the honey harvesting process is much, much slower. So yes, that's right. On day 69, we're getting hot and sticky. Yeah, you're welcome. Just before day 70, we take a honey apple and place it in a present under the tree. Once again, we're trying to give back. And that night with everything done, I just kind of hang out with the bees and chill for a little bit, watching the sunset. Pretty beautiful, isn't it, Beatrice? Day 70, and the secret Santa Christmas elves deliver again. This time, we get a single chicken egg, and the request for a cake. I thought you'd never ask. So of course, we craft up some more cherry blossom fences, and I start to clear out an area to make a small chicken pen. I do decide it should all be level, and then I make it nice and tight with some log supports like I do. And soon, we have a cute little chicken pen with one cute little chicken. Then we grab some honey for the next project. I decided this apiary uh, looks so beautiful, I'm going to go ahead and make a second one. 
We then rinse and repeat. I set up the platform over the water, border it with cherry logs, and then fill the whole middle in with dirt all over again. Everything's going great, right? But just as I'm thinking everything was going my way, I remember that the mobs are still big boy bullies as my chest and iron farm are once again creeper blown up and destroyed. Which means I have to spend the rest of today repairing everything and definitely not crying myself to sleep. No, no, not at all. And on the start of day 71, we try and run the grass over to the new farm. Unfortunately, we don't really get this to work either. For now, let's just try and harvest enough honey to get these beehives. I set them up correctly this time, and then we get our first egg. Now guys, I swear, I'm not cheating here because it didn't even turn into a chicken. See, told you I wasn't cheating. I grab some more honey, then restrain my rage. Nah, I'm just kidding. So we get our final beehive down, and then all the cozy warm campfires below them. Lastly, we set these trap doors down. In case you're wondering what the trap doors are for, these protect the bees from running into the fire and hurting themselves. We don't want any crispy honey now, do we? So I head over to the chicken pen, and I start to think to myself, maybe instead of just having candy on this island, we should start cooking up some chicken nuggets. But I think the chicken may have heard me, because she farted out an egg, and this one gets us another widow chicky. We power grow this chicken with a ton of seeds, and then once it fully grows up, we start to breed them. Don't make any hillbilly jokes. YouTube doesn't need any more of those. Don't do it. So we race out of there like NASCAR, and I go to check on my chocolate factory. This tank says I have over 235 buckets of chocolate. Wow. Plus, we have turbines overloaded with chocolate, and the whole thing is surrounded in a chocolate moat. I gotta say, I do really love this playthrough. So now, while we're waiting for the bees and the chickens to start to get ready to breed again, let's get started on a little mini project. We run a system of belts from the auto farm chest with a brass funnel that will only let sweet berries come out. Yes, turns out the auto farm can harvest sweet berries. To power all these belts, we have to run some cogs down underground. I want them to be a block lower than normal so that I can bury them and still be able to walk over them to get to the chocolate farm. So we run a shaft all the way underground over to the first belts. Then we run a few cogs up to them so we can get them going. And yes, we get lucky. The first belt is actually running in the right direction. And yes, the second belt we get unlucky because it is not. I figure out that we can get the cogs going on the opposite side and I eventually make it work out. Then all the way back over here, we get a little more goofy cog work going. But sure enough, the last belt is now headed in the right way too. So now that we can move all these berries over, where are they headed? That night, we run a huge pipe all the way from the main chocolate tank with another pump on it to push the chocolate all the way down to get over to the berries. By the next morning, we have everything working, but well, there is a small problem. Now, even to this day while I'm recording this, I'm still not sure why the chocolate wasn't traveling all the way down the pipe, but after using a wrench, I peek inside each pipe and I see that the chocolate's only gotten about halfway down the entire tube. So it's fine, we can make do. We'll just have to deal with the spout being right here. That night, we set up a depot underneath said spout, and we run even more belts farther down the line until they meet the depot and manage to power all of them, getting them headed in the right direction. The berries start running down the belts, and in only two days, we get our third official candy made. Chocolate-covered berries are now on the menu. I really think that my mom would love these, and I think that your mom would love these. These nuts, ha, got them, kill confirmed. We then set up a chest system underneath the spout and add a brass funnel with a filter that lets only the finished chocolate covered berries drop down into the chest. Now let's get real here. Nobody wants cabbage or soybeans anyway. We take all these plants out and start to replace them with sweet berries. Now that is more like it. By that night, the chocolate covered berry stockpile is looking pretty impressive down here. And now it's time to get back to that second honey dome. Soon, we get the glass set up on the windows, to the walls, to the honey drips down my beehives. And that'll only work if we add some more flowers. And bees! Bee fight! It's a bee fight, boys! And just like that, we've brilliantly moved a swarm of bees. Oh, I forgot to add a door to this dome. Hmm, well, that's not so brilliant, is it? But I do manage to get that fixed. And soon, we wrangle every last one of the bees, too. Speaking of honey dripping down, I set up a system of pipes 
pump and a tank on this bee farm too. And by day 77, I pull a little sneaky and run a belt all the way over from the first bee farm to this new bee farm and I get the honey flowing. The rest of today is spent growing flowers and making so, so many little bees. I love it. I think bees might be the best mob in Minecraft. I seriously can't stop myself with these bee puns, guys. It's getting bad. So, just before the end of the day, huh? Did you see how I said B4? No emphasis on the B? I will admit that was pretty tough though. Anyway, we start on another farm right on the water. We have to fill this one with wheat because we're gonna need flour to make our next candy. We also are gonna need a mixer for our next candy. So we set that up on its own mini little platform right here. First, we set up the burner on the surface this time with the basin on that. And then finally on the top, we add the mixer. We get some cogs on the mixer and I add a large cog to make sure that this time it's spinning fast enough to mix everything up good. In fact, I actually start thinking, I know, terrible, right? Why not maximize our speed? After all, it's not like this is a kitchen blender with its top off, right? The faster the better. Seems legit. So I start to add a ton of large cogs and I make a bit of a mess over here, but they do, in fact, turbocharge the speed of the mixer. Woo! Look at that thing go. We then spend the rest of the morning hanging out with the bees. <laughs> Ooh, ticklish. Uh-oh, uh -oh. one's gone down my pants. And while ants in your pants might be uncomfortable, bees on your knees is a horrible idea. But what's not horrible is our next two add-ons. Two more farms right next to the mixer. So, what will these farms be? Shh, I'm getting there, settle down. The first one will be filled with dirt, and yes, it is going to be another wheat farm. For the next one, we got to swim on down and grab some more sand. I start cooking up some of the sand, and that night, I get this drowned kid some chocolate, and soon, he starts to go kill his fish friend. Wow, that's brutal. So that's why my mom says I can't have sugar before bed. Okay, fair. We then start to lay out all of the glass on the bottom of the second farm. And here comes that classic sand checkering pattern. So I think you guys already know what time it is. Sugar Daddy, round three. Yup. We finish up the night by getting the wheat all set up as well. And by day 80, we need to take a break from the Create Candy Machine cause we are running low on supplies for real. We have to head down to the mines and get all the mats we're gonna need to get ready for our last two candy machines. By the nighttime, we finally get home and load up the iron farm and smelt down all of our goodies. I then head out and I started to breed the chickens, but I'm not sure how I'm gonna get these eggs into a cake machine just yet. But I know, just like always, I'll figure it out. In the meantime, I'm gonna to start to set up the wheat farm. I set up the mechanical bearing, dead center, and then I do the same over at the sugarcane farm. So then we add a radial chassis over here as well. And with all the iron and other mats that we've collected, we easily get the farm arm added. What's not so easy is fighting off all of these fishy boys while working out here on the docks. Although I do have to say, I'm getting a pretty good hang of this. This is getting easier and easier. I'm finally not totally sucking at this whole survival island thing. Speaking of survival island, what would you guys say to me doing 100 days of hardcore arc? I don't know if I should stick to Minecraft, play it safe, or maybe I should try something shiny and new. Speaking of shiny and new, the first shiny and new thing I'm gonna do is build up this first wheat farm and get it ready, collecting some Wheaties. By day 82, we have a belt set up from the wheat farm to the basin. Perfect. Then, no big surprise here, we do the exact same thing on the other side with the sugarcane farm, running a belt from the interface to the basin as well. Gotta say, I'm getting pretty good at this. We get all of our harvesters set up, which of course is business as usual, but then I try something that is not quite so business as usual. I set up two shafts, and then I try to connect them with a vertical belt, which I've never done before. That worked out so well, I decided to keep it going. And now we're gonna connect the farms to the windmill. Well, mm, no, not quite. The belt can only go about 16 blocks or something like that. So we can't quite make it all the way. No problem. We can just connect another belt in the middle and keep this belt party going. Finally, we get the belts connected to the farm and, uh oh, whoa, not hooray. Cause that sugarcane farm looks like it's ripped the entire belt system and basin. And it's even taken the belt that connects to the wheat farm. Whew. Silly little industrial accident. What a goof, my bad guys. So after a bit of quick retweaking and reworking, we can finally say one day without accidents. We get both farms looking pretty good at day 83. So then we spend most of today trying to run power and cogs all around, hooking up all the belts, leading into the basin. It's much easier now that this isn't being thrown all over the island in a circle anymore. 
That night, we add a mill to the wheat side so that we can get flour. And yes, if you haven't guessed it, it's just like how we had it at the chocolate factory. We need to make sure that the belts run down low enough to get to the mill's flour as it drops down. But on the sugarcane farm side, the interface is actually high enough so that the mill can just easily be set up right on top of the belt. No reworking needed. Nice. So now, of course, like we always have to, we get the mills and all the belts all powered up on both sides heading into the basin. Finally, it's all working perfectly. And I gotta say, it is working really, really fast. I mean, look at this. And if what I'm thinking is correct, then this means that we're gonna start to really pile up this next candy super fast. All I need is to add a last ingredient. Now, all I need to do is add the last ingredient. We have a ton of honey all stockpiled in this little tank. It's ready to be pumped into the mixer and, well, mixed with the sugar and the flour. And finally, with the pump being powered, we are now not ready to make our next sweet treat. I just need to make sure that when it comes to the wheat farm, we have only flour heading down this belt into the basin. No seeds. I know, I know. Another customer complaint. Blah, blah, blah. Now that there's only flour going in, this thing goes crazy. Look at that. In just a few seconds, we get a stack of our new candy. That's right, honey candies. Hmm, now that's some sweet sucking. As per usual, we get a funnel chute and a chest set up so that we can start to quickly stockpile this new little treat. Now we have a solid four amazing unique candies on our island. On day 85, I gotta admit, I'm kind of addicted to the auto fueler feeding system, so I decided to set one up here on the honey candy burner as well. I know that technically this is another little repeat, but I really love this thing, so come on, give me a break. So, with all this honey candy stockpiling, it's time to start to work on our next big project. I know that this is probably gonna be our last one of these 100 days. I take a second and consider what do I really wanna do? Now, yes, I was gonna make cake, but everybody who's played vanilla Minecraft has already made a cake. Sure, a cake making factory with Create would be cool, but a sweet roll is something totally new. Plus, let's be honest, I can take it down to my vault buddies, because I hear they're super popular amongst the tunnel snakes. I head over to the chocolate factory and look at the auto milker to try to remind myself of how we built it, but I see that it's actually not working right now. Oh, there's a fish jammed in here. Ooh, smells. Eh, that's just more protein in the chocolate, I guess. That night, we collect some kelp for our belts, and we collect some wood for, well, our wood. We then get started on our last platform of the playthrough. I also cut down about half of this very last island, and I just realized I had a third island over here and I never even used it at all. We take all of that dirt and set up yet another farm, which has, surprise, surprise, even more wheat. Look, if you didn't know that a sweet roll was going to involve wheat, I, I can't help you with that one. On day 89, I wake up and start to look into how to make bread automatically. Using fans, we can wash the flour and turn it into dough. But to do this, unfortunately, we're gonna need a ton more iron and andesite. So today is gonna be down in the mines and it's gonna be a short one. So on day 90, I take an entire day's worth of zinc and andesite. And with this, we make like a googillion andesite alloys, eh, give or take a little bit. So now that we have all these goodies, we can make a ton of harvesters and get this bread, literally. That night, we're going to be busy getting our radial chassis down on one of our last wheat farms. But when I say one, it's kind of a little bit of a lie there, because we're actually going to have two wheat farms. These bad boys are going to be twin farms. In fact, this setup is going to be so cool that the fish is obviously getting a little bit jealous. Good news is, now I'm actually strong enough to slap this boy up. And after we're done with this, we can quickly get back to setting up the second wheat farm. By day 91, we get our mechanical bearing and gearboxes set up on each farm arm. And we get smacked right in the head with the apple farm. I already have diabetes, I don't need a concussion too. We use another quick little one belt, two farms trick and get ready to plug it into the very top belt to power it all. We bonk some more iron, craft up some more harvesters, and then get another concussion just as planned. I'm gonna try to design a brand new interface system. Instead of having two interfaces, one for each farm, that then have to drop off the wheat in the center, I'm gonna try to have a single interface in between the two farms. I set up a ton of brass funnels with the intent to poop out all of the seeds before they make it onto the belt as flour. Then we have to lay out said flour belt, which, hmm, I guess can't go through a torch, okay. And then we set up the brass funnels to once again poop out the rest of the seeds. And this funnel in the very front will puke out the final flour. So I know I can wash the flour into dough, but I want to look through here and see if there's any way I can quickly cook the dough. I then see I can once again use an encased fan 
to cook the dough as well. Nice. But we're super tight on resources, so we're going to have to hurry back into the mines to make those encased fans. Mm, no nice. But on 892, I come back to the surface, and I gotta say, looking at this island, it is pretty nice. I'm pretty proud of this. We drop off the cobble into the iron farm, and yes, we have to return down to the mines one more time to get a little more iron. So on day 93, we take one last pilgrimage to the temple of Bonk and craft up our fans. My biggest fans for sure. Oh god, that was such a bad joke. That was like, that was like a grandpa joke. Ugh. Okay, back to the create machines. We set up the very first fan facing down the flower belt. We get a brass funnel to only pull out the dough once it's been made all nice and wet. Finally, we're going to aim that dough towards the baking belt. Day 94, and things are getting a little tight now. We're starting to run out of time here. But we do manage to get another fan facing down the baking belt. This one will run into a chest that will collect the finished bread. We throw down some lava, and I quickly pray that this stuff doesn't completely burn down my entire wooden platform. Eh, seems safe enough. As for the twin farm, it turns out that the second wheat farm is, eh, is, uh, coming up a little bit short there. That's what she said. Oh, wait, oh. But soon, we get a quick little extension on this bad boy. And now, when we switch this thing back on, everything should work perfectly- Oh, wait. Both of these farms are actually going in the wrong direction this whole time. Well, luckily, we can fix both farms at once and get the entire thing right just by switching out one shaft to a gearbox. And now, not only are both farms working, harvesting our wheat, but they're also connecting both of the interfaces on the arms to the one central interface, giving all of the wheat to the middle belts. And speaking of belts, we should probably get those things powered up too. So we have to try to run some gears from the belt. So now we're gonna try to run some gears from this top belt up here, all the way down to the bottom belts. By day 95, we get the cogs onto the mill, and then we get the gearbox running the flower belt. Oakley Doakley. We then connect this belt to the dough belt, and no, of course not. Have you guys not been paying attention? This never goes smoothly for me. We do manage to mess around here and get in some more cog goofiness, and we do make this work. Now all we have to do is run a few cogs to the back of this fan, stand, thingy, majig, and this gets the flour washing right away. Soon, we get ourselves some dough, and it's headed right down the baking belt but it just runs into this chest, which is fine for now, I guess, but we'll have to fix that later. For right now, we make a row of cogs, and then we add the lava back in again, and once again, we pray that this doesn't light the wooden cogs on fire. And everything seems to be holding together here for now. We get another gearbox on the back of this fan, and we connect it to the belts. Ooh, that's kind of cool, look at that. It's kind of like we made a little create flamethrower. Oh, and of course, I do light myself on fire. So now we're going to try to run through the dough on the baking belt just to see if it'll work. And um, I don't know if it's really supposed to work like this. This doesn't seem right. But before I can figure that out, I decide to move on and get the final area set up with another drain for milk. And right here, just like we did with the chocolate factory, we're going to be setting up a very similar belt in and out system so that we can run milk onto the stream. On day 96, we set up another fan blowing up a whole bunch of chutes, just like the chocolate factory. And then we set up this pump. So of course, we do the whole shoot, brass funnel deployer trick. You've seen this all before, you guys know. We add a bucket full of milk right onto this deployer, facing the right way. And then we put all the chutes stacked up on the fan. And if I'm going too fast here, and if you need a step-by-step, -step, just watch the first time we did this. This is the exact same thing. Finally, a little bit different here. At the drain, we set up some pipes to go up to a spout, and then a depot below that which is eventually where all of our bread is gonna end up. Then, one more time, we set up the infamous combo of the funnel, chute, and chest system, but it is a little bit weird, because in order to get this chest, we actually have to go over the belt or, or under it. Somehow we have to get around this. But I do decide to make another little Scorpio setup here that's under the water. And we end up, once again, making our chest weirdly sorta half buried, but if you reach under the baking belt very carefully, it does sort of kind of work. I set up the shaft very specifically with two gearboxes. I'm doing this so the shaft will be rotated one way in the middle, and then it'll be reversed and set back the same way on the way out. This way, we can make a belt that moves towards the depot and not mess up the shaft that's already going and powering the milk belt. Pretty cool, right? I know, I know. Speaking of pretty cool, this is all looking pretty good. So of course we have just one last detail. 
we throw up our glass cage and we run out to grab another moo moo. We then walk this cutie out of the pen and lock it behind us. And oh, you can see it in her eyes, the pure fear. And that fear is justified because I think we all know where this is going. We get the lead up to the glass cage, but the cow is just a little bit busy getting grounded into hamburger in an industrial farm accident. But we do eventually trick this cutie into the little milk hole. And now we have everything we need to get the last cogs in place. Soon, the milk starts pouring out, and we have some milk building up inside of the spout and get the pump working. And now we just need that bread. It's day 98, and we only have two days to figure out why this bread isn't baking right. I keep on watching in this belt and trying to figure out what's happening right here. It looks like not only is the dough not being baked into bread, but it's not even making its way to the chest as uncooked dough. It almost seems like it's being burnt up by the lava and being destroyed. We add some bread into this chest just to make sure that it isn't getting lost somewhere. It turns out it works just fine. So what's the problem? Well, here we go. We do technically get a sweet roll made, but the excitement is a little bit ruined because I know I cheated here a little bit because I still don't know why the dough isn't cooking on its own. So as the day is running down, I check and of course, once again, I mess up the easiest thing. Of course, it's not lava. It needs to be in the, of course, it's not lava that needs to be in the fan. That's literally just making a lava flamethrower and it burns up all the items coming towards it. Duh. We need to have a fire being blown like a real oven. So we put down a little block of netherrack in front of the fan. This is kind of our last chance. If this doesn't work, finally. Finally, the bread is being cooked. And soon, we get the dough cooking, and it's coming down toward the spout, which of course means that we're officially making sweet rolls. Our fifth dessert, chocolate bars, chocolate-covered strawberries, honey apples, honey candy, and now, officially, we have sweet rolls. That's right. And so, running on a little bit of a high here, that night, I just run around, and just look all over what is probably my most advanced machine yet. Day 99, and in the daylight, I take just one last tour of our beautiful dessert island. This truly is some of the best of Create Mod. I love this mod, and I really love this little candy challenge that we set up for ourselves. Sure, I couldn't make everything. I still could have made a cake and candy canes and marshmallows, but really, that just shows you how much the Create Mod has to offer. I hope you guys love this island as much as I did. I hope you guys have a happy new year and try not to eat too many sweets. <laughs>